13 Sentinels Aegis Rim was originally released on the PS4 in September of 2020 and was praised for its storytelling and strong writing. And now that I've played it on Nintendo Switch, I can see why. This was the first Vanillaware title I've ever played and I'm very happy that I finally got around to it. Its story is unlike anything I've ever played before, made even better with an overall amazing art direction and a cast of engaging characters, and it's something I wish I had played a long time ago. Without giving away too much, the basic plot of 13 Sentinels is a sci-fi story where students of Sakura High School have to fight against an invasion by using huge robots. You know, just another typical day in Japan. And to progress through the adventure, you'll engage in two types of gameplay. The first is a battle mode, which involves real-time strategy combat where you defend against invading kaiju, and the other half focuses on the story, which is undeniably the main attraction here, and is where I spent most of my time. It's like a visual novel, where you do more watching than playing, though you are able to move around and observe while everything plays out. The narrative is complex and well thought out, being told through the perspective of 13 different characters, with each one having their own story arc that intertwines with the others throughout the story. The characters are introduced in their prologue, and you'll initially have to play out their story section as they're revealed, but after that, the game opens up and allows you to freely choose another character if you want. It's somewhat episodic because each story scenario lasts around 10 or so minutes before you're sent back to the character screen to either continue the story or another character's. But while you generally do have the freedom to choose whichever character you want, the game ensures that you can't get too far ahead of yourself by limiting which story routes are available until certain conditions are fulfilled, such as playing through more of another character's story or getting enough progress in the battle mode, which I'll talk about later. This keeps the pacing of the story in check and ensures that you don't learn something about the story too early. Because of its structure, it's easy to say, well, I'll just do one more scenario. But then something really cool happens and then you'll say, well, I have to see what happens next. And before you know it, you've lost a lot of hours to the game. This style kept me hooked because it gave me just the right amount of mystery and uncertainty to pique my interest, especially because each character's story arc has a lot of depth. You won't get too far into any one story before the game throws a curveball your way, which just might have you sitting up in your chair to take it all in. It's a really strong formula that was able to get me invested in these characters in just a few minutes. The first character you have access to is Juro Karabe, whose story is a mystery involving his confusion about why he feels that something is off about his current life, and why he's been having strange dreams about fighting robots in a destroyed city. Not to mention that his best friend seems to be somewhat suspicious due to him knowing more than he lets on. Another character, Iori Fuyusaka, has a story that begins with her crushing on a guy that she bumped into while rushing to get to school, but quickly becomes interesting as she has also been having these strange dreams, like Juro Karabe. And one of my favorite characters, A. Sekigahara, has no memory and is trying to figure out why he awakened in an alley with a gun in his hand and a dead woman lying on the ground. This story is made more interesting once it's said by himself in a holographic message that the world he is in is not his own and that he's from another dimension. These are just the beginnings of each character's arc, but because the story can flip and reveal some interesting concepts so quickly is why I ended up loving it and the characters after only 10 hours in, and I could tell that the game was about to get even more amazing. It constantly subverted my expectations, even when I thought things couldn't get crazier. I also like that each character has their own thing going on while still working together to serve the main plot, and that's great because it's mandatory to play through every character's story in order to get the one true ending. Although having the freedom to choose which character's story to continue may seem a bit unusual, I enjoyed having the freedom to choose whichever character I wanted to in the moment, and it made the whole experience much better. Even with the limitations that kept me from progressing too far with one character and learning things too early, the overall game didn't feel overly linear. I've only touched on a few of the characters and their stories, but there is so much more to uncover with this game, including some incredible plot twists and revelations to be seen. The combat portion of 13 Sentinels is significantly different from the story portion, perhaps for the better or worse depending on the type of player you are. Here you will engage in top-down explosive battles against the kaiju with characters that you meet in the story. Combat is strategic and real-time and is thankfully pretty easy to get a grasp of. It boils down to positioning your team of up to 6 units and blowing up the enemy forces with everything at your disposal. You have different types of offensive skills. Some skills target enemies directly in front of you, and some target enemies that are within a specific area. Each skill can be useful for different situations. If you see enemies that are grouped together, skills that target a specific area would be very useful. If enemies are lined up, skills that have a narrow but long area of effect work well. One thing to keep in mind though is that these attacks will cost you EP, so you'll need to manage what you do. You also have to be careful that your sentinel does not get destroyed, because if that happens, the pilot is ejected and becomes easy pickings for the enemy, and if they die, it's game over. It's a good idea to see if you can unlock or upgrade your offensive capabilities after you've spent some time fighting. 
In the customized menu, you're able to purchase and enhance skills with a currency called Meta Chips. This increases the amount of tactics you have on the battlefield and is worth looking into. If you upgrade your skills enough, you'll be able to get a stronger version of it. For example, my long range missiles were upgraded to super long range missiles, allowing me to target enemies a lot further than I could before. Personally, I prefer attacks that are able to target singular enemies and do a ton of damage, which is good for taking out stronger enemies. But I also really enjoy attacks that cover a wide range, which is good for crowd control. It's just also satisfying seeing all those explosions. As I mentioned before, battling is necessary for unlocking more of the story. As you clear levels, more character scenarios will unlock, and as you level up, you'll also learn pilot skills for the characters. They're kind of like unique passive skills that activate under certain conditions, such as a power or stat boost depending on who a certain character is deployed with, which can encourage you to be mindful of who you want to be in a mission together. These battles also award you mystery points. These are used to unlock mystery files, which are little bits of information about anything mentioned during the story. Buying these files is also a requirement to unlock the next scenario of certain characters. They're interesting because you can get detailed descriptions of basically anything mentioned in the game, such as characters, items, and even enemies that you'll encounter in battle. They also work as a form of achievements and are a nice reward after completing battles. Personally, as soon as I had mystery points available, I just went and unlocked as much as I could. There are a lot of elements to the combat, and even as someone who isn't the biggest fan of top-down real-time strategy combat, I was able to play through without any annoyances. Overall, I think what it added to the story, especially near the end, made it worthwhile for me. But if I were able to skip these sections, I likely would have. There isn't anything inherently wrong with the system, but real-time strategy games have never been my favorite. It was something I waited until the last minute to do, but when I eventually had to do it to progress in the story, I just played through it, but I didn't have any issues with the missions. Luckily for those who only want to focus on the story, there is a casual mode, which makes the battles extremely easy with no real risk of losing. There's also an intense options for those who want a real challenge. I played on normal mostly myself, which offered a nice balance, but as someone who isn't the most well versed in these kinds of games, it can still be somewhat tough. 13 Sentinels runs well on a Switch overall and looks great. It's not graphically demanding, but it doesn't really need to be. The art direction is amazing, which the backdrops and the character sprites show off really well. And if you look closely, you'll notice that all of the backgrounds are hand painted, which, when combined with amazing lighting, lends the game a very appealing and unique look. This is a great example of fantastic art direction winning over graphical fidelity. And this extends to the battlefield as well, where the buildings are 3D modeled and you have a great view of the city. There's just something visually pleasing about the look of it. The game targets 60 FPS on Switch and for most of the game it's pretty smooth, especially during the story sequences. Of course battles can get pretty hectic and as you'd expect there are some frame rate dips here and there, particularly when you blow up a group of small enemies. That's a lot of visual effects that the Switch has to process, and it does struggle a bit. Usually the dips don't last too long, but if you are sensitive to that kind of thing, you'll definitely notice it here. Luckily, the game looks really sharp in handheld and docked mode, which is a big plus, and in terms of loading times, it's really fast. You can load a save and be in the game from the Switch's home screen in only about 13 seconds. Navigating menus is also really fast in this game in general, and the game appeared to look identical to the PlayStation 4 version to my eyes. I would also like to point out that the voice work is fantastic in this game. Pretty much every single line is voiced and everything just flows together nicely. These voice actors put in a lot of effort to bring these characters to life and it shows. They just need to get to know the real Megami. The one who's a hopeless romantic. And a cool laid back girl just like everyone else. Maybe then they'd have an easier time talking to you. Overall, 13 Sentinels is a lot better than I expected. While I'm not the biggest fan of the battle system, mainly because of the nature of the gameplay, I was still able to have some fun with it and it was worth putting up with for the story, which is one of the best I've experienced in recent memory and is a standout in all of the games I've ever played, making it a game that I absolutely loved. It's been a while since I've played a game with a story that pulled me in as much as this game did. The formula of telling it in an episodic way made each scenario easily digestible, and I really liked being able to hop in and play a little bit of the story at any point. Because of this, it ended up being a game that worked extremely well with the Nintendo Switch's portable nature, and looks amazing on the system thanks to its art direction. If you're a fan of sci-fi anime or anything involving mechs, as well as a story that will obliterate your mind with plot twists, or if you've been waiting for this game to eventually come to Switch, this is the game for you and now is the time to play it. And that's going to do it for my review of 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you subscribe to Game Explain and ring the bell for a lot more on 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim and other things gaming too. Until next time.